so yeah, uh, today I'll talk about uh, pre-registration uh, and, and my personal experiences with this. Um, and, um, and basically my first three slides are, are in an order which was determined just a few seconds ago. And I was thinking, what should I tell first? Uh, and, and, but after that, there's some more structure to my story. Um, and I decided first um, to kind of tell you how, how did I get here? And it's a kind of funny because, uh, the, well, there's this meme on Twitter, how it started, how it's going. And uh, this is kind of how it started. So on the left, you see me uh, arguing with uh, Zrinka Protocenic um, about pre-registration. Uh, she has asked any experience, asked people if there's anyone with experience in registered reports in, in our field of posturing gay. And I said, I'm in doubt. I'm not sure whether we should do that. Where, where, why can we just be honest about whether our research was like exploratory or not? And I mean, in the most cases, we already have these documents. So why should we pre-register? Is it really needed? Come on, I don't think so. And just be honest, and that's that's good enough. And um, yeah, that that was then. And how it's going? Uh, here is an email from Lena uh, asking me to uh, to come and uh, and talk here about my experiences with pre-registration. So in the meantime, um, something has happened. Obviously, uh, at least I started pre-registering. Um, and so yeah, that's what I, I want to tell about talk about today for uh, for a bit. And so. Usually, this is my the next slide is my first slide because I tend to forget to uh, have acknowledgments, and I always start my presentation with thanking the people who helped me along the way and and who I couldn't have done it without it. And uh, you see a lot of Twitter profiles, and that's because I got a lot of the stuff that I talk about. I got the ideas from for that from Twitter. Um, so um, yeah, so some people in here. Uh, Mathieu Boschkonche, Daniel Lacus, Chris Chambers, Brian Nosek. Uh, really tweeting a lot about these things and really influenced my thinking. Then Nick Kluft was the first PhD student who came to me and said, sure, I want to pre-register our study. I was like, okay. Uh, and of course, we had this conversation with Srinka and Jaap van Dien was a uh, professor of biomechanics at our department and uh, was very, very helpful in, in um, getting this going. And uh, actually, Miriam Pineapple should also be on here, but as I said, many others were not on Twitter or were simply forgot to mention. So um, as always in science, I don't think I did this alone. I was influenced by many people uh, and, and many people actually did lots of the heavy lifting of the work that I'm about to present um, and I try to acknowledge them throughout as well. Um, so then a disclaimer and a kind of said that while I was fiddling around to, to work on my uh, getting my screen shared, I am not an expert. Like I'm just figuring this out as I go. Uh, and I have no clue if what I'm doing is the right thing. And I'm just on Twitter a whole lot and, and read what other people are doing and try to make sense of that. I'm trying to make my own science better. Um, and along the way, I met the right PhD students who really wanted to do the same thing. And they came to me also like, you know, short, sure, I've read about this, I wanna do this. And I said, okay, let's let's go. And I worked with the right professors who were very open-minded and encouraging and were not like, you shouldn't do this because you're giving away your ideas or whatever. And so I kind of hate this last one because normally my slides contain no text and only figures. And I tried to do this uh, for this presentation, but I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to do it. Uh, so this is a rather boring presentation with a lot of text and yeah. That's just the way it is, but I thought this conveyed in the best way my experience with like pre-registration. So to go back to how it started, um, I was actually always someone who wrote down his research plans quite a bit. So if you go to my computer, you might see this folder structure, which is like finished projects, uh, low open the project, so it's like projects, ongoing projects, and there's some private stuff, and then there's the to-do. And in the to-do folder, you can find all kinds of projects, which are projects which I've thought of and which I might want to do. And each of these folders contains a Word document. And the Word document looks something like this. It has a title page. This, so this is a fully zoomed out version. So it has an uh, abstract, an introduction, a method section. I even have a results section in most of these papers, even though there is no data for them yet. 
So I already think of like, what should the results look like? And what do I, and I have a discussion and I have the topics for the discussion with kind of like, uh, if the result is that, then this is a, what, what it would mean, et cetera. So this is one of these documents. Uh, I have several of them and yeah, I'm not too happy with them because like, I, I guess everybody has this, this folder of to do projects, uh, but I, yeah, I have several that are in this state where the paper is almost written, uh, but the data still has not been collected nine years later, just because other projects came along or, you know, um, so these are projects where the project is there, just the data is missing, um, which is kind of sad. So in a way, going to pre-registration here was a really, really small step. Uh, because if you uh, do pre-registration via the as predicted, and some have to share another screen now. So this is this is the form that you have to fill in if you do pre-registration via. Via as predicted dot org, uh, which is one uh, one way to pre-register your study. Uh, authors, okay, data collection, has data been collected, hypothesis, what's your hypothesis, what are dependent variables, conditions, analysis, outliers and exclusions, sample size. So this is actually, in a way, far less than, than what I did before, because I used to not only write these things, I used to have like a complete introduction with all the literature up to then and like a rationale for the study and like all of this. Uh, so in a way, this was less work, but still it feels like, um, it, I mean, it, and that was why I was always against it because it felt like pinning myself down on what I would do. And, you know, what if I would miss penicillin by, you know, by saying, I want to look at this and I've missed this, this, Awesome chance finding. And that was like, this was what, what it was against it. But you know, this one PhD student said, okay, let's let's go for it. Let's do it. I want to do it. And, uh, and we did. And uh, I'm quite happy actually. Uh, so the next slides, now I need to change uh, this one. So the next slide I, I will tell a bit about like my actual experience. So, so, so this is how I did it before and, and why it wasn't actually a big transfer. and. And now I will talk a bit about um, like three perspective or experiences or the, the pre-registration from like, I don't know, three sides with that, with that, that I've uh, encountered and that I thought, okay, you know, this makes sense. So the first thing was, was the author. And so we, one of the things that we had a really hard time with was, was uh, sample sizes, pre-registering sample sizes. Normally, we would just say we do, uh, you know, 10 subjects, because in our field of study, 10 subjects, like if you do 15 subjects or 20, sub if you do 20 subjects, that's a large study in biomechanics, because you have to imagine that that each measurement takes about three to four or five hours, um, putting markers on a subject, having them do stuff. So this takes quite some time. Uh, data analysis is also quite involved. Uh, so if you have 20 subjects, that's really quite big. But now we, we, you know, and we usually do that like, not the finger work. I don't know, um, just guesstimation. Um, other others have done ten, so if we do fifteen, we're safe. Um, and now we thought, well, if we're going to pre-register, this is not. I mean, we should do better than that in a way. So we kind of burned our hands a few times there, if you may say so, or I don't know if it's actually burned our hands, but. It's gotten to a point where we said, okay, we use a Bayesian uh, sequential sampling framework where you can set a base factor which you want to achieve and then uh, consecutively sample more and more subjects until you reach that. And you set a minimum number of subjects that you do and a maximum. Uh, and then in between, if you reach that base factor, you're, you're fine. Uh, and so, uh, so monitoring the base factor during the data collection until threshold of meaningful evidence had Reach. And we set the number of 20 healthy adults first, and then we exceed the base uh, until we extend the sample until we uh, until the base factor exceeded uh, uh, 10, 
uh, or a maximum of 50 uh, participants. And we thought, you know, we know these kind of studies and we know what's going on. So 20 is going to be fine. Boy, where were you wrong? <laughs> um, in the end, we had, we had 50 subjects. Uh, so this is something we weren't, well, in a way we weren't too happy with because it was a lot of work doing these measurements, like a lot, like way more. But in, but in the end, we can give like way more solid answers to, to our questions. We can also say, you know, there is very unlikely that anything is happening there in this condition. Um, and, and like highly, highly unlikely. Uh, and so we've had this with, with Nick Kluft study um, first time, and then recently we did the same thing again, and there we were also pretty sure, and we had basically the same thing again. So this was kind of, um, I mean, it's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. It's, it's like you put in you extra work, and it's, it's a lot of extra work, um, but the signs you're getting is so much more solid. So, I mean, I was quite happy with that, uh, but in a way we're also like, Oh, come on, you know, it's like subject, subject 35, we're almost there. No, not yet, not yet. And then, well, um, but it makes the science better. Um, and so the forgetful author, like I found it really funny. Like, like I said, usually I have these papers written out. So I have already like what my results section should look like, um, but Turns out that even if you do this pre-registration and you write it down quite strictly what, what you will do, your methods, um, we had deviations from our pre-registered -re document. And so this was one thing that I found out which convinced me to still do the pre-registration. Like even if I would find penicillin in the meantime, I could just write it in my, in my document like, okay, we, this is our pre-registered findings and we have a deviation here, we found penicillin. And so this was one thing where I thought, oh, wait, this is a possibility. You can do that. Okay, sure. Uh, but, but also we were working on this and we found that, okay, we did three deviations from a pre-registered document. And for the, the last thing um, was actually really funny because we, we had a group and we planned to categorize them on the basis of uh, fear and we had physiological arousal data. So we measured, um, how sweaty people were. And then uh, like, if you get more sweaty, the idea is that you're more uh, fearful. Um, and so we were doing that. And then we were in the meantime, also doing other analysis uh, because that seemed logic at that point. But then we, like when we were writing it down, we went back to our pre-registration. We're like, wait, we only wrote down that we would do it based on these physiological arousal data. Right. And, but in our minds, we had written down that we would do it based on other measures as well. You know, so even though you've written this down very clearly, what you will do, you're, you're still starting to deviate from this. Uh, and, and that only becomes obvious when you like put your method section next to the pre-registered document and you see, wait, we did all these kinds of analysis, which we thought we had pre-registered but we, which we actually did not. So it's really easy to fool yourself into thinking that, yes, this is indeed the analysis we plan. Uh, so it's even easier, of course, to fool reviewers or, or readers of your paper um, because yeah, we're just good at telling stories and, and fooling other people, I think. So for me, this was really uh, um, having the pre-registration document in such a clear and defined way really helped to, to stick to the story and to make explicit which parts were um, like uh, more exploratory in a sense. So this is as an author. And then we had got to do with, uh, with reviewers, which was fun actually. So we had a nasty reviewer too. Um, we said, uh, there's an overemphasis on hypothesis testing throughout the manuscript. This is unwarranted and diminishes the credibility of the manuscript. This work is primarily exploratory in nature. This unwarranted overemphasis on hypothesis continues throughout the results and discussion sections in particular. As the dependent measures addressed here have not yet been assessed in running, an exploratory study to determine how running is similar or different from walking is perfectly legitimate, but the manuscript must be written to prevent the work as such. This was the study from Mohammed Reza Mahaki, uh, where we looked into uh, differences in stability between walking and running. Um, and this was not an exploratory study. Uh, because um, we did 
actually not pre-registered a study. So we, our answer was uh, one suggested method for deterring harking, um, which here the, the reviewer also, uh, he says this comes across as harking, right? Uh, and one suggested method for deterring harking uh, is pre-registration of the research proposal. And we did not officially pre-register this, this proposal at that time, uh, but we did project, put the project proposal. So this written out introduction plus methods um, with, with the hypothesis stated uh, on an OSF page. So OSF is the Open Science Foundation. For those of you who don't know, uh, go have a look there, osf.io, all kinds of useful uh, tools. Uh, which has a timestamp. Uh, and then from that, it can be appreciated that our hypothesis were formulated before the data. Um, and this is another point which I think is uh, before the data, which help have a data uh, date stamp after that document were collected. So we did not agree with the reviewer that we were harping. And of course, the reviewer had to, I mean, could only agree with us because yeah he could check that for himself so another thing here of course is that we also shared the data and i think that's an uh, a very uh, very important additional step uh that can i mean make science better and and especially in these uh in these pandemic days is, is really helpful also for for others i mean you could have a very good research question and the data for that could be out there but at the moment you I mean, you cannot go into the lab and collect the data often. And if there's data out there that, that you could use to answer that question, uh, that, that would be great, right? And so, I, and also uh, another reason to share data, and that's why I put this one in. Um, so here is uh, another study by Mohamed Reza Mahaki, um, more or less similar experiment. <coughs> we looked into uh, uh, the effects of a, a stabilizing frame. So this, this contraption you see on the bottom of the slide here, which makes that people cannot move sideways when they're walking on a treadmill, so they cannot fall over basically. Um, and we made all the data available and then and all the code to process the data. And then one of the reviewers said, well, the authors made all the data and scripts available, which is great. Uh, looking over what's in this cloud drive, I noticed some weird issues. One issue is that some of the variables have very large jumps. And the reviewer is absolutely correct because we created all kinds of plots for which were intended for ourselves to, to check uh, what we did. Uh, and But we didn't actually check them for some reason, which, I mean, everybody makes mistakes, right? Uh, so the, the, the reviewer caught us off guard there, basically uh, spotting a mistake in our data analysis. So this is also our answer. Uh, and we actually, our answer is this is one of the reasons why we share data and code to make sure that due to un unforeseen circumstances, we don't end up publishing rubbish. So we're actually very grateful to the reviewer there because uh, he or she caught us off guard um, and helped us to, to improve the paper. In the end, it turned out this was some random noise. So it didn't have effects on the overall outcomes, but still you don't want uh, some, some weird data in your data set that, that you're publishing. Um, and so I'm, I'm putting this in there, although it's not pre-registration per se, I, I thought it's like, um, like it's, it's an example of making your science more open and, and that's a, like, and how that can really help you. It feels scary. It also feels like, uh, it feels shitty to have messed up in this way. Right. Uh, but we all do it. And, um, so am I, am I, angry at myself or the PhD student for not catching this? Not really. I mean, everyone does this. Am I thankful to the reviewer for going through my code and my data? Yes, sure. I always do that as well. If I get the, a, a paper that I can review, ask to review a paper and the data and code are available, I will check it um, just out of interest. And also like if there's something weird in the data, you know, have a, have a, have a look. Um, so then the last one uh, was the appreciative editor, uh, Myra van Leeuwen. She basically uh, recently got her paper accepted, which was also pre-registered and we share all the data and code and uh, tried to go around in all the, uh, yeah, basically, I would say modern ways of, of science. Um, and so uh, the editor writes, personally, I'm happy to congratulate you on a very metal, 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 Methodical and thorough study, 
and commend your group for pre-registration. Very nice work. So it's it's being appreciated by, by editors for sure um, if you do that. Of course, there might also be editors who don't, but then again, I think they're on the wrong side of, of history, but you know, uh, that's up to them. Um, so yeah, to conclude, should you pre-register? I think obviously yes, uh, but I would go further and also share data and code whenever possible. And I think it costs very little time. I mean, you should, your data and code should be organized anyway. You have to have an idea of what you're going to analyze anyway. If you don't have an idea of what you're going to analyze before you start analyzing your analysis, your analysis will take longer and the chance of you finding bullshit can be like is, is increasing. So why not sit down and write it down in short first and you know make that pu public and so that you can uh, hold yourself to it because like even if you think you don't trick yourself try it for your next analysis write everything down then go collect the data then do your analysis and then look back at which analysis you did and what you wrote down and see if there's any discrepancies i bet you there will be one or two things which you like did because it you know it fitted the data better whatever so you always have these things and it's fine as long as you're open about that i think and and it can greatly benefit you and, and others if if you do so um, so yeah, that's, that's my experiences. I hope this is helpful.